on how to build an electromagnetic inductor. But before we get into the ins and outs and practically how to do that, um, let's just explain what electromagnetism is. Well, at the heart of all magnetism is the fact that when you have, say, an electron flying through space, um, by its very motion, it generates this thing called a magnetic field. In fact, if you think of magnets um, in real life, the ones that stick to your fridge, inside them there are currents of electrons moving around, then generating the field, which gives that magnet its properties, its north, south, and its field. So if that's the direction of the electron in electricity, then this would be plus and that would be minus. And this would be the direction of the magnetic field. It's given by this thing called the right-hand rule. The thumb gives you the direction of the current, and the curl of your fingers gives you the direction of the field. Now, I can practically demonstrate that by taking a large C battery, and we get some alligator clips, and if we flow some current through these clips, and we grab a compass, we should be able to essentially have this arrow of the compass point perpendicular to this wire and change directions when it, whether it's on top or the bottom. So right now, the red is facing the battery, the red north, and as you can see, I'm turning the needle with the wire. And the red's going to change directions if I put the wire underneath the compass, and that's it. So what you're witnessing right now, and as this wire is actually getting hot, is, and as soon as I've plugged that one out, the wire does not, ooh, maybe, 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 maybe a little bit. Um, so what you've witnessed is this field being generated around the flowing wire. Now there's a neat trick that happens if we coil that wire around, I don't know, something metallic. This is made out of stainless steel, but maybe this is going to work. So there's our coil, and we can go back to the battery and plug this in. We have generated a temporary magnet. Now I'm going to show you on paper how that works and in fact I don't know how strong this magnet is but I'm gonna try to maybe pull up a nail or two with it. Nah, not really strong enough to do it. Now part of the reason is because these scissors are made out of stainless steel which is not as strong as iron. But now what just went down there is that this wire that's generating this field came to be in a curled form. And these fields, following the right-hand rule, were kind of compounding to create an overall effect of adding up to a larger magnetic field. So as if this was north and this was south of a magnet. That's what happens when you curl up a bunch of wire and you have direct current flowing through it. You essentially develop a temporary magnet. So to do this, we are essentially going to wrap this wire around this coil and we're going to go as high as possible and maybe tape off the ends. So you're wrapping it around the coils of the old thread and you just keep going until you pretty much run out of old thread or wire, whatever happens first. Now when you have it wrapped up, um, it's a worthwhile idea to just grab some electrical tape and wrap it around the end so it doesn't come loose. It's kind of cool, I got red electrical tape with red wire. So 
So hopefully um, this electromagnet, which is going to be working on the same principle as my scissors with the curled wire, is going to be a little bit more powerful. All right, as you can see, the compass is already turning, which is a good sign, and maybe it'll be strong enough to pick up a nail or two. Oh yeah, there it is. We're and as soon as I disconnect it, the nails are gonna drop. In fact, you have some residual magnetism, like it's strong enough to lift one nail on its own, and when we introduce the current, it can collect many more. All right, that's it. Electromagnetic induction demonstrated. Your turn.